Uh, good morning, River Church. I just want to uh, elaborate a little more on that uh, before we pray, uh, a little bit more um, about camp. <clears throat> if, you, if you decide that you want to help us uh, drive some kids up, or maybe you're on the fence, should I do it, should I not, should I not do it, uh, you don't have to go, like if you can't commit to both days, that's fine. Uh, if you can maybe just commit to Monday, but you uh, to to drop them off, but you can't commit to bring them back, uh, that's okay. Uh, if you can maybe just commit to bringing them back, but not taking the kids up, that's okay. But <clears throat> if uh, I just want to be as flexible for you guys, um, just so if you guys are interested, uh, you, you can. Um, and just so you get an idea of what that looks like time-wise. We plan on uh, leaving here Monday, July the 4th at 10 a.m. So we'll leave here about 10 a.m. <clears throat> that should put us in Corpus, or in, in where we're going to, at about uh, 1.30. Um, we're going to stop somewhere, so it's not three and a half hours. But we're going to stop. Uh, it should take us about three hours to get there, plus 30-minute uh, truck stop. Um, so, uh, so what was it, 10 to 1.30, and then once you're done, you just drive back, you'll probably get here uh, probably about 4.30 or 5, so that's what that would look like, and then on uh, Friday, <clears throat> the chaperones, the drivers, would need to leave here about 7.15, uh, just so we can get back, to, or so we can get picked up at about 10.30, start making our way back over here at 11, so uh, and, and then we should get here, what, 2.30? Yeah, so, um, or 11 to 2. So from about, from about, on Monday, from about, let's see, 10 to probably about 4 o'clock, 4 or 5 o'clock would be your time window. And then on Friday, it would be from 7 to about 2 o'clock. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there just so you guys can get a mental, maybe it does work with your schedule. Uh, maybe you didn't think that it would have worked. Uh, maybe it will work. Uh, that's the case. You don't need to take a car. We have enough vehicles. We just need drivers. So if that's you, if you're thinking about it, come talk to me. Come talk to one of our youth uh, leaders, and it'll be super helpful for us. Also, uh, parents, this is the camp. The Zephyr guidelines, all the information that we need for camp is on here. So leaders, uh, kids, parents, if you, whatever you need to know about camp, uh, it's here. And then also, <clears throat> I think that's it. I think that's it for now. Um, big thing, though, is we just need drivers. So if, if, if someone wants to drive, I'm going to drive. I think Victor's going to drive. Um, and we just need one more, one more driver. So if that's you, if you're interested, uh, let, me, let me or, or one of the, the leaders know. Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for just being able to come together, uh, gather together, study your word, uh, grow more and more uh, into your image, Jesus. I, I pray that, that our lives just reflect your life, Lord. I, I know we're not there right now. Uh, I know that we will never be at that perfect, uh, a perfect reflection of you while we're on earth, Lord. But my prayer for us is that we are <clears throat> just moved closer and closer and closer uh, into that image throughout the course of our life, Lord. And so as we study today, I pray that uh, the stuff that we talk about this morning, Lord, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, convict us, encourage us, lead us, allow us to see what you want us to see, and grow us in the way you want us to be grown, Lord. I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> um, Pastor Randy, again, he's, he's out. He was out last week. He's still out this week. Uh, he's, again, taking his daughter up. Well, they're up there already, but looking at the campus where she's going to be going, visiting his older daughter who's already there. Uh, so if you guys just want to keep him, keep the family in your prayers as they travel, I can just imagine logistics. It's just, it can be overwhelming when you travel, so just keep him in your prayers. <clears throat> um. So my question for us this morning is, have you ever had a stain on your shirt, right? A stain on your shirt. I'm in the season of life where I have a bunch of little kids. Right? I have a six, four, 
uh, t- about to be two, and we're expecting another. And, and, and with these little kids, you know, they have little hands, and these little hands, uh, they like to eat Cheetos. <laughs> and with the Cheetos, uh, they also like to be carried. And so, <clears throat> and, and so when I carry them, I, I end up with a handprint somewhere on my shirt. It's either handprint, it's maybe their face, you know, their, their lips up on my shoulder, something of that nature. But I am constantly... Uh, having stains on my clothes. And at this point, I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it is what it is going to happen, so I can't fight it. But, but have you ever had that stain on your shirt? And, and when you have that stain on your shirt, uh, it, you may have noticed, or it may be a big deal to you, but, but that stain on your shirt could end up being a big distraction. Right, it's, especially if you're going to a presentation or or going to have a, a, a maybe a, a fine dinner or something of that nature, and you got a stain on your shirt, you're like, oh man, like this is going to be obvious. They're not going to listen to me. <clears throat> the things I'm saying is going to it's not it's not going to be good. A few years ago, to, to to illustrate this, a few years ago there was a Super Bowl commercial from Tide, and it was this young man who was going into an interview. Uh, and so he went and he wanted this job. He was, he was just trying to, I guess, get this promotion. And so he goes into this interview with his manager, and he's got a stain on his shirt. And so the, the first question that the manager asked him, he says, uh, you know, so, so, t- so tell me about yourself, right? <clears throat> and, and the young man starts talking, right? He's like, well, you know, I have this and that. But as he's talking, there's a little stain on his shirt, and the stain is just like blah, 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 right? And, it's, and he talks some more, like, blah, 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 blah. And the more he talks, it's like the louder the stain gets. And as the manager is looking at him, like he's, at, he's gotten to the point where he no longer looks at the person, but he's just focused intently on his stain. The, the, and, and so I, I watched, in prepping this sermon, I watched this, this, uh, this commercial a few times, a couple times, uh, and I was trying to listen to what the, 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 the young man was saying, despite the, 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 the stain yelling, um, this, despite the stain being a distraction, I was, I was trying to listen to what he was saying, and, 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 and I could hear that he was saying, you know, really good things, you know, I did this, and my company grew, and, and all of these good things, but that message was not heard because of the stain on his shirt. <clears throat> uh, the same can be said of us. Now, I'm not talking about our clothes, right? Not, 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 not our clothes, but as Christians, I'm talking about our lives. Right? There's a stain that some of us have on our Christian life, on our Christian witness that, that makes it hard for other people to hear our message. And that stain or, or that, that, that characteristic is a lack of love. A Christian life is one that is to be full of love. But oftentimes we, we have, as Christians, we have a hard time doing this. I've heard countless stories. I'm sure you've heard stories like this too. Uh, but a, a friend of mine <clears throat> grew up in a Christian household, um, grew up going to a private school, and uh, had a, a pastor as a father. And as he went through his life, he became very resentful of the church. Or it's like all these people that I'm, that I'm with, the people in my house, the people at my school, that they, 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 they talk about love a lot. They, they, they say we should love each other, but the, the person that I see at home, he's not that guy. All right, the, the kids that I see at school, they're not, that, they're, they're not those, those loving Christians. And, and so because of these Christians' lack of love, it has put a stain on their witness. You may be familiar with stories like that. Failure to love is a glaring stain on the lives of Christians. People can't help but notice unloving Christians. And so today we're going to talk about that 
Fortunately, if you're feeling convicted already, fortunately, we're not alone, right? I'm that way. You may be that way. Uh, the people in the passage that we're going to look at today were that way also. <clears throat> but after today, what I hope is that we just have an understanding that we are called to love. We're going to look at what love looks like, and we're going to rely on the Holy Spirit to enable us to love in that way. <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, uh, we're, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians uh, today. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Randy preached, as, as we've been going through this, the Holy Spirit sermon series, Pastor Randy preached on spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. If you haven't heard it, I would recommend that you go back and listen to that sermon. But it was about spiritual gifts and how, as Christians, we've all been gifted in a way to help build up the church, to help serve the church, right? Uh, the gifts were for a building up of the body, right? There are many different parts of the body, um, like there's a hand, there's a foot, there's eyes, and, and they're not all the same, but they're all, without each one of those parts, right, the body would be messed up. And so spiritual gifts were given to build up the church. <clears throat> and if you haven't listened, I would suggest going back and checking out that sermon. Um, but it's really interesting. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul is discussing spiritual gifts, it's very interesting the way that he closes that chapter, the chapter on spiritual gifts. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 to 31. So he's kind of recapping. He says, Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healings, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. So he's, he's, he's kind of recapping what he just talked about, right? Verse 29, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, excuse me, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but earnestly desire the higher gifts. Okay, so he's talking about, like, not all of us can have the same thing, right? These are the gifts. Not all of us can have all of the gifts. But listen to the last sentence in chapter 12. <clears throat> and he says, And I will show you a still more excellent way. Wow. A still more excellent way. So some of us, I know me and, and maybe some of you guys, some of us may, may think of the idea of spiritual gifts and, and, and what, what is my spiritual gift, what am I good at, how can I learn what my spiritual gift is, and those are all good questions, those are things that we want answers to, but there is still a more excellent way, and it's something that we can all do, and that is love. Spiritual gifts are good, but there is a better way. There is a more excellent way, and that way is love. So we're going to look at that this morning. Um, I wanted to start with this chapter because I wanted to talk. Uh, 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 spiritual gifts are important, right? The, the, the Holy Spirit giving us gifts is important, but there is, man, that's not the, the end of Paul's sentence. The, the passage we're going to be in today is the next chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and <clears throat> this is like the love chapter, right? You may know nothing about 1 Corinthians, you may not know anything about what's going on in this church, but you have heard this, this, this passage before. I think uh, a, a lot of people have it at their weddings. I think we had it at ours. I don't remember Lisa's killing me with her eyes right now. We didn't, did we? I don't remember. <clears throat> uh, but you hear it a lot at weddings, right? The, the whole, the, the, the love chapter. <clears throat> and, and so many of us are familiar with it. And so we're going to go through it. We're going to go through it chunks of Scripture at a time. Uh, and we'll talk about each one as we go. So we'll start with 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. And Paul says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, 
but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, everything I have, if I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, being a mar- martyred, dying for your faith, if I, if I do that but have not love, I gain nothing. <clears throat> Without love, I am nothing. Without love, you are nothing. Without love, we are nothing. Now, I want to briefly look at these uh, different uh, things that Paul talked about. And the first one is, he says, tongues of men and ain't right. So it, 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 I could have the tongues of men. I could speak with this angelic uh, beauty. But if I have no love in my heart, it is like a clanging cymbal, right? It'd be like if Rick were still back here banging on the drums while I'm trying to talk to you guys. You would not hear a word that was coming out of my mouth because there was no love in my heart. Prophetic powers, same thing, prophetic powers. If I was able to, uh, to, 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 to speak uh, what is going to happen, if I was uh, a- able to understand all of the complexities of Scripture, all the questions that everybody has, if I was able to understand all of those things but did not have love in my heart, you wouldn't hear. I am nothing, right? If, if I'm sacrificial, if, if, I, if, I, if I go share the gospel to all the nations, and like, you know, we're going we're gonna to kill you, Billy, but there's, and, and, and then they kill me because of my faith, and, I, and I'm killed for my faith, and I have not love. I gain nothing. Love... <laughs> It's a characteristic, characteristic that allows people to see and to, to receive uh, our Christian witness. And I'll give you an example. So sometimes with Lisa and I, uh, whenever we get into an argument, I mean, we love each other. I love that woman. She's awesome. Um, but whenever we get into arguments, right, there's, there's a tension there, right? There's, there's this awkwardness there. There's this unresolved tension. And you may have been there <laughs> And so, like, sometimes when she's mad at me, I will you know, try and do nice things, you know, like bring her some Dairy Queen, or I'll do something nice, like, hey, I, I love you, you know, I still care about you. Uh, but we still haven't talked about it, right? We still haven't talked about it, we still haven't worked through it, and she'll, like, take the ice cream and be like, thank you, now leave me alone. <laughs> I'm like, what did I do? Um, actually, this happened yesterday. Um, we... Uh, Something like escalated, and it was just like, before I knew it, I was like, oh man, now, now we got to the point where it was awkward, and I was like, gosh, what are we doing? So, so then, and, and it was funny, because all this stuff was on my mind, and then so I'm like trying to like, I go and give her a hug, and she's just like, whatever, and, and all these things, <clears throat> and, and, and so I was trying to be nice, I was trying to express my love to her, I was trying to do these nice things to her, but because there was this unresolved tension she wasn't concerned about the things I was doing for her. Right? She didn't care. Right? She wanted to know that I loved her first. We needed to settle that first. And so that, 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 that's the same. That's exactly what Paul is talking about here. When there's not love in our hearts, when, 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 we are not, when we don't have love, and we'll talk about what that looks like here in just a sec, but when we are not uh, loving, people don't see our Christian our Christian witness. Right? The life that we live as we try and profess faith, they don't see that. They don't notice that. They're like, oh, this dude is just like all those other Christians that are supposed to be nice, supposed to be loving, but this guy's really mean. <clears throat> so the spiritual gifts were to bring people together, and each person was gifted to benefit the church. But what was happening in the church in Corinthian, uh, in Corinth was that they were taking these spiritual gifts and they were starting to compete with one another. Right? They were starting to say, well, well, I got this gift. What gift do you have? Right? 
Uh, my gift is better than your gift. Or, hey, I can do, I can do the, the healing. Can you heal? Right? I can do the teaching. Can you teach? Well, I can do this. And so there started to be this competition of who, had, uh, who was the, the best, who received the best spiritual gift, right? And so instead of these, instead of these gifts being uh, given to build up the church, to bring together the church, uh, these gifts were tearing apart the church because they did not love. It's, it's that whole phrase, and I hear this all the time, and I want to dismiss it, but I think it's good. People, what is it? People don't know how much uh, you know until they uh, or people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? It's that same, same principle. And so as we're talking about love, as we're talking, hey, hey, we need to be a people whose lives are marked by love, whose lives uh, uh, look like love, reflect love, the question is, what is love, right? What does it mean to love? What are we talking about with love? <laughs> now, this week, I don't even want to say this, this week, I was, uh, as I was listening to the song, or list, uh, preparing for the sermon, the song from the 80s by Foreigner, it's, I want to know what love is. I want to know what love is, right? That song was like in my mind, right? I had my mustache. I had the music playing in the background. <laughs> it was very like 80s this week. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually, side note, I'm keeping the mustache. The Icon Kids want me to keep it through camp, so... Anyway, um, but, but this is a great question. What is it, what does it mean to love? What is love? If this is the more excellent way, as Paul says it is, then what does it mean, right? What does it mean? Now, now there is a lot of confusion about this word, rightfully so. That's why we're talking about it. <clears throat> As I've, as I've expressed earlier, as I've said earlier, man, I love my wife, right? I love that woman. I think she's the best. She's amazing. She's awesome. I also love pizza. <laughs> um, I really love pizza. Pizzeria, I think, is the best pizza. Uh, and then Peter Piper's pretty good, too. Um, but I love pizza. <clears throat> and then the, the next thing. I, I love all of you guys, right? I love you guys a lot. I care about you guys a lot. Now, I've just said that I've loved three different things, right? I love my wife. I love pizza. And I love you guys. Um, and so I can see how it is confusing. Like, what does it mean to love? Now, in the, in the English, in the English, in English, there's only one word uh, for love, and that's love. Um, in the Greek, though, there are, th there, there, there are many words, but there are three main words. Uh, there is eros, there is phileo, and there is agape love. Right? And eros is, has to do uh, with the love that is between a man and a woman. It's more of a passionate love. It's where the word erotic comes from, but it's this passion-driven love. Right? Then there is phileo, and phileo is more of like a brotherly love. Right, I, man. I just, man. We go way back. I would die for that person. That that guy is my my homie. It's like uh, Philadelphia got its name or has its name, the city of brotherly love, uh, from this word. But it's that kind of love with one another. And then there is agape love. Now, this is the word agape. This is the word that is used in this passage, right? So when you read love in this passage, it's not, if you read the original language, it's not eros, it's not phileo, it's agape, right? And this type of love is a different love. It is an unconditional, meaning I don't love someone based on their actions, it, uh, but, but I just love them, I, unconditional. I just love you because I think you're awesome. That, that's all it is. I, I just love you. It's a selfless love. It's, it's not trying to get something in return. Right? It's, it's delighting in the object of your love. <clears throat> this is the, the same love in which Christ has loved us. 
And so, so what does that look like? We're going to look at it as we go through this next passage in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. And this is the part that you've heard in uh, at the weddings, all of that. You probably have this. We have this at our home somewhere, I think, too. Um, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So, so we're going we're gonna to go through these. We're going to look at each one of these. Um, <clears throat> just to spend a little, little time fleshing them out. Um, and, and I want us to see is as we are going through these, man, what areas are, are you falling short? What areas am I falling short? What areas are we as Christians falling short when it comes to loving the way Christ has called us to love? Right? The first one is love is patience. Are you a patient person? Does something set you off quickly? Sometimes uh, I, I like to pride myself on being a patient person, but once I had kids, uh, I, th- I still think I'm pretty patient, but I've noticed that my patience goes a lot quicker. Right? I say something, and it's not done, and then I say something, and it's not done, and I'm like, all right, son, we've got to figure this out, man. What are we doing? Right? Are you a patient person, or does something just sets you off quickly and often, right? What about when we're in traffic? You're still a Christian when you're in your car, you know. <clears throat> but I've seen some, some Christian people do some unchristian things, say some unchristian things, because maybe someone cut them off, or right? someone did something that they didn't want. They were not patient. Love is kind. Love is having or showing a tender and considerate and helpful nature. You know, you can do nice things for people in a very harsh manner, in a very rude manner. Or you, you could do the right things. You could say the right things in the wrong way. Are you kind? Love does not envy. Are you envious? Are you jealous? Maybe of someone else's career or maybe of someone else's success or maybe the possessions that they have or maybe the place that they are in life? Are you jealous of these other people? Do you ever have this mentality, well, well why, why not me? Why, why that person? Why not me? Right? I deserve that thing. Are you envious? <clears throat> Love does not boast. Now, 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 you may be in the situation where you have the things, right? I, I have the career. I have the family. I have the spouse. I have the possessions. I have these things. I have the gifts. Are you boastful about these things? Do you brag about yourself? Do you brag about your possessions along with that love is not arrogant right do you have an exaggerated sense of your ability or or your importance do you ever have this attitude of man i'm just i'm just god's gift to earth right if it wasn't for me everything would be broken everything would be in disarray these people should be thankful that i am here do we have that attitude Love is not rude. Again, we talked about this. Uh, you can do nice things in a rude way. Number, uh, number seven, love does not insist on its own way. <clears throat> does everything have to be your way? Right? So when you go out to eat, the places that you eat, does it have to be the way that you want it to be? 
the stations that you listen to, if people still listen to stations, I don't know, the, the music that you listen to, uh, the, the way that you, you raise your children, the projects at work, does everything always have to be your way? Are you over-controlling? From my experience, when people tend to get this way, everything has to be their way, or else they're in a bad mood. With, with people like that, what it, from my experience, it, what ends up happening over time is people just like don't want to be around that person anymore. Right? They start to separate themselves from that person. They start to avoid that person. Does everything have to be your way? Now, this doesn't mean that, because as I was thinking about this, it, it's not necessarily just you know, the type A personality, it's my way or the highway, but even the people who <clears throat> are always down, well, it never goes my way. I wish it would go my way. I want it to go my way, but you go along with what the other person says, but you're resentful because it's not the way that you want it to be, right? Do you insist on your own way? Love is not irritable. Are you irritable? Are you in a constant state of annoyance? It is not resentful. Do you hold a grudge with people? Do you keep a record of people's wrongs? Are you waiting for some something to happen, right? You, you may have rehearsed, oh man, as, as soon as, at least could say this, as soon as Billy gets home, oh, he forgot to do this one thing, and if he just looks at me wrong, oh man, I'm going to bring all of it up. Bring everything up. It's not resentful. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing. Do you rejoice at wrongdoing? Do you rejoice at getting ahead by means of immoral behavior? Whose kingdom, which kingdom, whose kingdom are we building? Love rejoices with the truth. Do you love truth, even if it costs you something? <clears throat> Agape love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. The New Living Translation says, Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Do you give up on things and on people? Do you lose faith in things and in people? Do you believe the best from your brother. <clears throat> uh, one of my... It, so, so I coached high school for nine years, uh, coached football, and talking about giving up and, and, and not thinking the best of people, I, 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 we would have kids, so I was a coach, and we'd have our kids come to practice, and sometimes the kids would not come to practice. And I'd be like, all right, I've got to ask this kid what's going on. So I would sit and I would talk with him. Hey, uh, you know, why, why weren't you able to make it to practice? And they would come up with some crazy story. Well, this happened, and I, it's because I had to go here. And, that. and what, I, what you want to do, our, our initial um, desire is to, to prove them wrong, right, to get in some sort of argument. And what I eventually learned, I learned this from one of the other coaches, is you just, okay, if that's what the person says, then that's what they say. Take them at their word, right? With children, this becomes the case. With, with kids, uh, oftentimes, I, I, heard, I, I know from experience, and I was listening to a podcast on this, and they were talking about with your children, uh, hey, <clears throat> who did this one thing, right? And they get in trouble. You call them in. Who did this? And they come up with some elaborate lie. What, 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 I have, what I try to do, what we try to do is, I, I don't want to accuse my kid of lying. I want my kid to know that I always believe what he says, that I love my son, and I, tr I love him so much that I just trust that he's going to tell me what he needs to tell me. And they say with, with, with kids, you just do that, and if they lie, then they lie. But eventually, if they are lying, they will actually get caught in a lie where you can actually prove that they are lying. <clears throat> and then you can deal with them lying at that moment. But but, but, but do, we, do we love people in this way? Do we, do we give people the benefit of the doubt? 
Agape love endures through every circumstance. Christ demonstrated this love for us. Romans 5, 8 says, But God shows His love, His agape love for us, in that while we, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. He loved us. He loved us so. He died for us even while we were opposed against Him. He showed His love for us, to us, even when we opposed Him. Right? And it's a beautiful picture. He's, he's up on the cross, and, and, and the, the soldier there, he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Right? Forgive these people that have me on this cross right now. They have no idea what's going on. That's what Christ has done for us. Now, if you are uh, in here, maybe you don't believe in Jesus. Maybe you are pushing him away. Maybe you think, man, that Jesus stuff is, is weird. I'm only here because, you know, my spouse invited me, my, invited me my, my friend invited me, and I don't really like this Jesus thing. I don't really get Jesus. Jesus died for you. He died for, uh, he, he loved you so much that he died for you. It's important. Right? Our, sin, our sin separates us from God, and rightfully so. And Christ reconciled that with his work on the cross. So if you don't believe in Jesus, man, <laughs> I plead with you, put your faith in Jesus. Trust him for the forgiveness of your sins. Trust him to be the Lord of your life. But, but we learn about love from his love for us, right? It says, but God shows his love for us even while we were still sinners opposed to him. He died for us. Christians, we are to have this type of love for others. Right? You may be dealing with somebody. This person may or may not care about me. Right? This person may or may not have my best interest in mind, but I'm going to show this agape love to them anyway. I'm going to be patient with them. I'm going to be kind to them. And the cool thing about this is the last part of our our passage. The cool thing about agape love is is this love is going to be uh, with us for eternity. It's going to be forever. We're going to love this way. Not not only are we going to love like this now, but we'll be loving like this for the rest of our existence. Moving on to uh, verse 8 through 13. says, Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know now in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. Verse 11, When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in parts, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. Verse 13. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. We will love for eternity. Right? In this passage, Paul is talking about, <clears throat> he, he, he says, um, as, as, for, as for tongues, that will cease. Right? As for knowledge, that will cease. Right? When the perfect comes, those things will cease. And, and what does that mean? That, that means when Jesus comes back, when we are in heaven, those things will cease. You won't, we won't need to have faith anymore because I'll see Jesus face to face. I won't need to hope anything anymore because my hope will be right in front of me with Jesus. These things will pass away, but love will not. Love will not pass away. 
And he uses this, now this, this, this verse that says, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I spoke like a child, I acted like a child. When I became a man, I put my childish things away. And what that is saying is right now we are the children. Right? The perfect has not come yet. We have not reached that maturity yet. We are still the kids. We are still the children. We still see in a mirror dimly. Right? We don't see clearly. But a day is coming when we will reach maturity. And guess what? We are still going to be loving in, uh, during that time. Love, agape love, will still be there. And so you might be sitting here this morning thinking, Billy, there's no way that I can love the way that you're calling me to. And I agree that it is impossible outside of Christ's work in our lives. 1 John 4.19 says, <clears throat> We love, we are able to, this is agape, we are able to agape love. Why? Because Christ first agape loved us. Right? He initiated this love towards us and now we can love other people in that way why because he first loved us now this doesn't come naturally this is through the work of the holy spirit right the holy spirit empowers us to love this way it's funny because this passage or this idea that the, the, the Holy Spirit empowers us to love, but then if you look at what a fruit of the Spirit is, meaning what can we do as a result of the Spirit, we are able to love. It's a fruit. It comes from us, right? We have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to be able to do that, and we will do that because of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> The Holy Spirit empowers us to produce the fruit of the Spirit. We are able to agape love because Christ first agape loved us. <clears throat> so if you're feeling like you can't, none of us can outside of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us. May our hopes May our, uh, our, 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 our hope, our uh, dependence, our reliance be on the Holy Spirit to allow us to love in this way. And so before we close, I just want to look at three different areas, and we'll, we'll do this quickly, but three different areas where we can express this agape love. And the first one is to the church, right? Paul is writing, let's, let's not forget, Paul is writing this letter for the uh, bringing together the unity of the church in Corinth. All right, do we think that we are the gift to River Church? Do we think that, man, if, if I wasn't here, then River Church uh, would, would be down in the dumps? Do we think that the, the River Church is, is, is lucky to have us? Do we love each other in this, with this agape love way? Do we genuinely care about one another? Right, Randy uses this, this phrase to drill down deep. Do we drill down deep in our relationships, in our friendships? Right? Do we bear each other's burdens? Or do we just kind of have like, like a, like a distant, oh, I know that person, they go to River Church, I go to River Church too, that's cool. Or do we care? Do we, do, do, we, do we lean in instead of pulling away the church? We can love the church. The, the second way is to love the home. The agape love at home, right? Do we love our spouses this way? Or, or, or are we keeping score against our spouses? Right? Does, do, do your work circumstances, maybe you had a rough day at work, do your ro work circumstances impact the way that you treat people when you walk in through the door at the end of your work day? Some of y'all maybe, maybe stay at home uh, and take care of the kids. Right? Are, are, you <clears throat> are you just thinking, oh man, like I can't wait till so-and-so comes home because I'm going to go off on that person. Right? Do we agape love 
our spouses? Do we agape love our kids? Or do we only love our kids when they meet our expectations? Is our love for our children based on their accomplishments, based on the things that they do? Or is it just because I just, this is my son, I love him? Some of us aren't married, we don't have kids. What about your parents or your siblings? Do you love them in a selfless way? The workplace with your coworkers, even those people who don't profess faith, do you love them with this type of love? Do you, do you genuinely delight in these people? What about complete strangers? I talked about this earlier. Maybe in traffic, right? You, even if you are alone in the car, you're still a Christian, right? How do we treat those people? What about customer service? People just, man, they're just calling you. You know they don't care about you. They just want to get some money. Are you kind to them? Do you love those people? Maybe you're at the store. Maybe you're dealing with someone who's just driving you nuts. Do you love those people the way Christ has called us to? Are you showing agape love or is its absence in our life, in your life, a glaring stain to your Christian witness? May the Holy, Spower, may the Holy Spirit empower us to love like Jesus. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for what you have done for us, Lord. Um, you love us in a way that we don't deserve. Uh, and we thank you for that, Lord. Holy Spirit, as, as, as we have studied Scripture this morning, Holy Spirit, I pray that you have just encouraged us pray that you have just put your arms around us, comfort us. But I also pray, Holy Spirit, that you lead us, that you empower us to do the work that you have called us to do. Wherever we are in these areas, what, with the stuff that we talked about this morning, wherever we are, Lord, I pray that we the, 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 the way that we are not loving in this way, the, the baggage that we bring, Lord, I pray we just lay that at your feet and we just allow, uh, we just, uh, may you just lead us in a way that we are to love, Lord. Praise things in Christ's name. Amen.